What does a thousand pounds get you in the world of Windows and Arc Silicon? We gave something new a go, a 3-in-1 powered by Intel's Core Ultra. And we've been hammering it around the studio. Editing videos docked, checking lists, and even some light gaming. And it left me wondering, is Arc, the silicon powering this machine, enough grunt for most everyday people? We even built a desk in the studio just to test it. Now I think the days of buying a huge desktop are well and truly numbered. In the studio, we've basically replaced this eight year old desktop with a multi-use device that's more than just a 20 kilogram paperweight. This Dell PC looks modern, clean, and generally premium. The bezels make the footprint feel smaller than any 16 inch should, and if you discreetly debadge it, it becomes even more minimal, which I'm absolutely here for. Oh, and a little neat touch, there's a hinge sensor in here that interacts with your wallpaper within Windows, so when you you open this laptop, you get a kind of parallax effect, which is kind of neat. The display feels genuinely good. It's crisp, vibrant, and it's got colors that feel natural, verging on slightly overcooked, but this is absolutely fine. It makes for a pleasant viewing experience. The higher refresh gives a little bit of polish to gaming, which we will get onto a little bit later, but it makes scrolling and general day-to-day -day tasks on the laptop feel like a breeze. Oh, and there's a 1080p webcam that flanks the display, and this has a little cover for privacy which is ace. The trackpad is a win. Windows have finally caught up here. It feels smooth and accurate and the multi-touch gestures are generally spot on. The keyboard has a soft yet mushy feel with just about the right amount of travel for a laptop. I really like the typing experience on this, but that varies from person to person. One thing that isn't for me though is that numpad. I would much rather replace that thing with some larger speakers flanking either side of the keyboard. But I know there's a lot of business users that will get use out of that numpad. Pad. If you don't, you can just basically have yourself a rather large macro pad, which is ace. Talking of the speakers, they are okay. I definitely wouldn't replace a Bluetooth speaker with them. If you want to listen to music, definitely connect one, but they're okay for day-to-day -day tasks. One thing that I often overlook with most Windows laptops is the fact that this has a touch display, which I've found very useful whilst using this as a device in the studio, whether it's just for writing up notes in Notion or ticking them off as we go. Personally, I don't really use it much, but it's nice to have the option when you need it. Now let's talk performance. The Intel Core Ultra 7 inside of here really does live up to the mark. It's surprised me. I was interested to see how Intel's managing efficiency with these new chips, as well as giving you enough grunt as and when you need it. Everyday stuff, emails, browsing, multitasking, all handled very efficiently on this thing without a hitch. So naturally I was thinking how far can you actually push it? I downloaded EA and got straight into a game of Apex. On medium settings we were looking at around 60 to 70 FPS whilst in game. Now this is unheard of and it's unheard of because the laptop isn't plugged into power here. Now two years ago gaming on battery power like this was near impossible. A lot of people bought gaming laptops only to be disappointed that to play AAA titles they needed to be plugged into power. Now this is isn't a gaming machine, nor is it even trying to be one. It's more of a productivity workhorse. The fact this is so thin, yet I can sit here playing games over 60 FPS on medium settings without being plugged in is nuts. As far as productivity, we threw a lot of Premiere Pro projects at this and it handled them without a hitch, more so even when plugged into power, which we were doing most of the time at the desk we've built for this setup in the office. The laptop docks into the Dell 27 inch monitor and pairs really nicely with the Dell Pro Plus earbuds, turning this into a proper little editing hub. The Dell earphones can connect with a USB-C dongle, making for a super seamless connection and overall experience, adding to the simplistic nature nature of this whole ecosystem. And in our testing, they sound not only good for editing, but enjoying content too. The 27 inch Dell monitor is 1440p with 144 hertz. Yes, that's 144 refreshes of the image every second. It's certainly accurate enough for some basic photo or video work, sharp enough for text and emails, and due to that high refresh can even be used for games. And just a little reminder, this is all running over a single USB-C cable, handling power, video, data, and everything syncs easily. This all-in-one clean setup is basically being run from a tablet on the side of the desk. 
Because of the new efficiency and performance inside of this new Intel Silicon, scrubbing on the Premier timeline, especially when the laptop's hooked into power, feels liquid smooth and export times are there to match it as well. Now these chips have also been built from the ground up to handle AI tasks and there's a lot built in here. Whether you're using AI to simply enhance the quality of your video and audio on calls, all of that is light work for the Silicon here because of the onboard NPU that's built in handling all of the AI tasks. The battery life is generally solid for hybrid work. It seems to be really efficient when you're not really doing much, but then as soon as you ask for a bit of grunt, which it can provide, the expense is that battery does then deplete quicker. But I am happy to report the efficiency when doing lighter tasks like web browsing and emails and writing documents is amazing. You could go all day or even a couple with this new machine, and that's thanks to the Intel Silicon. There's a good modern port selection overall, HDMI, USB-A, and two C ports with one of them supporting Thunderbolt 4. You've got Wi-Fi 7 and Bluetooth 5.4 here, which in our testing was both very strong. The only thing I would say is no SD card, which is a little bit of a bump for the creators out there. But one thing this is talking me is this is definitely the way that PCs are heading. Gone are the days of buying a massive desktop and now you buy one device that is your desktop, your laptop and your tablet. It can both work and game. It can be efficient and give you power when you need it. And this this is just the start. So who should buy this machine? I think hybrid workers, students, and content creators that don't want separate machines for everything. A light and or moderate user who wants some efficiency and power when they need it. But one thing's for sure, Intel certainly aren't falling behind and it's been unreal to check it out in this Dell PC. And there is some Black Friday offers live right now, so it's a great time to build a setup like this with the laptop monitor and the earbuds.